RougeRadio.com. Jen speaking with Regina Mayer. Diaco. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Hey, Jen, how are you? We're talking about the proposed stadium for the Rough Riders. Well, I think you need to change that, actually, right off the bat. I don't think we're building a proposed stadium for the Saskatchewan. As a matter of fact, we're not building. They already have a stadium. We already have a football stadium in Regina, so we're not building a stadium. What we are looking at is an act- an entertainment facility that is going to attract all kinds of events, uh, including um, a new facility that uh, definitely will house the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, but frankly, they're going to be using the facility the least out of all of the other users. Um, so I think it's really important to, to recognize the, the difference in regards to what's happening in the 21st century when it comes to, to building this type of infrastructure. So what are the other um, stakeholders in this project? Like who, else, who else would be using this? Space? Well, I, 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 yeah, that, and that's, that's really the key question. Um, you know, uh, let's talk about what we have today, and then let's talk about what we need for tomorrow. For today, we have a single-use uh, facility that's uh, only available six months of the year. It's an outdoor facility that's actually costing the taxpayers of Regina about two million dollars a year to maintain. And uh, it's the home of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. It's the home of the Regina Rams, the Regina Thunder, and high school football. Um, and then, of course, there's a number of other uh, events that take place there, but minimal. What we don't have today is a center of excellence for amateur sport. What we don't have today is a facility that could be used year-round for large uh, entertainment uh, events, so large concerts, as an example, Uh, large convention center, uh, new hotels that would be attached to the facility, additional office space, possibly a new home for the Saskatchewan Sports Hall of Fame, but ultimately, a facility that is multifunctional that could be used uh, seven days a week, 12 months of the year, and uh, um, that can be converted, uh, as I said earlier, to, to a number of, uh, of opportunities that we currently don't have in our, in our community. Frankly, we don't have in Saskatchewan, period. So I, I think we need to think, think beyond uh, just simply a facility for the Saskatchewan Rock Riders. Of course, you know, everybody loves, well, everybody in Saskatchewan loves the riders. Um, and that they're, they have become a very, very successful uh, sports franchise, which we're all very, very proud of. Um, there's no question that they're going to be able to take full advantage of this as we've seen upgrades happening um, right across uh, right across the CFL. Uh, and uh, we have to be just as competitive, but we think... Um, we can uh, build above and beyond simply a football stadium. This is going to be a true entertainment facility that will accommodate many, many events. Okay, so you're talking 12 months a year, so obviously you're talking a domed facility. Not a dome. I don't think domes get built anymore. Uh, I know it's easy to say dome, and and I guess, as you can see, I'm trying to clarify a number of of, uh, mistakes that, that we make. We talk about a dome. We don't build domes anymore. Um, this would be an entertainment facility that would probably have a retractable, if possible, a retractable roof so that indeed um, in, the, in the summer months here in Saskatchewan, we would be able to enjoy uh, that wonderful weather during the uh, different events that would uh, take place there when it's conducive to have it uh, open air. Okay. So um, when you say if possible, we're obviously talking about, um, I guess, environmental concerns, like in terms of the snow and wind shear. In well, you know, I, we have to build. We're a winter city, and and you know, so is Edmonton. Um, Calgary is a winter city. Um, Winnipeg. We we need to uh, start thinking in terms of our infrastructure and ensuring that what we build is going to be conducive to winter cities. And I think it's an absolute waste of money to build a single-use facility that sits sits vacant. Um, six months of the year. I think it's a waste of public money, and I think it's a waste of, well, first of all, you can't get a private sector, the private sector to invest in a, in a, uh, in a facility, an open-air facility in a winter city that's only used six months of the year. There has to be a return on their investment. And the only way that's going to happen is if you get a bit creative and um, look at a facility that is, that is multidimensional that's going to provide uh, anywhere from trade shows to amateur sport to professional sport to uh, the arts, to concerts. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on as to what can happen in, in a facility of this 
of this nature. And there's no question that, indeed, the private sector will be very much involved. Speaking of that, um, what's the total cost estimate on this project? Well, the, the initial, the first facility that the province was, was leading, um, cost estimates were around $438 million. So, but that, that, that entire facility has been totally, uh, I mean, we have a blank slate here. We're going to be, we're going to be bringing a number of stakeholders together based on what their needs are. From there, once that's done, then we will go to the private sector and say, okay, how much can you, uh, this is what we have here. And um, this is how much money we have. Um, let us know what it's going to look like. So um, there's a number of components that have to come together on this. However, the good news is is that um, what we have is a pretty good plan in place in, in the, the redevelopment, first of all, the 53 acres of land. So there's, there's two things happening at the same time. We have the entertainment facility that will be on the 53 acres of land. And then, of course, we have the rest of the 53 acres of land that has to be developed. So there's a number of components here that uh, that are all coming together. And August 1st, there will be a report coming back to City Council that's going to provide us with uh, with additional information that will then allow us to go out and uh, start issuing some uh, RFPs that will uh, provide us with which, uh, which private sector uh, – Members will be uh, part of the development. So how how long are we looking at for the stadium? Like, what is there a conservative? So we're not build- I'm going to correct you again, Jen. We're okay, not sorry, building the, the entertainment facility. <laughs> what what's the timeline um, on the entertainment facility? 